What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be talking about anticipatory postural adjustments during gait initiation. And I have here just a, uh, an example of what this might look like. So if a person is standing still on a force platform and we are measuring the center of pressure trace, what we'll see is if we ask the person to step with this foot here, we'll call this the swing foot, we see is when you tell the person to start, they're initially just kind of hovering around here in between the legs, their center of pressure is and then it shifts towards that swing foot and then away from the swing foot onto the stance foot. And then you can see the center pressure travels up that stance foot as the individual pushes themselves forward and this leg swings forward. So typically people quantify these APAs in the medial lateral direction by just taking uh, this initial starting position and then subtracting from it um, the peak medial lateral displacement towards that swing foot. And so I'm gonna do that today in MATLAB. So let's hop out of here and into some code. Okay, so um, I'm gonna load this data in. This is a CSV file and it's just data from two different force platforms. However, the person is only standing on a single platform. So I'm only gonna pull that data in. And uh, essentially the setup is the person standing there, I uh, start, capturing data and then after five seconds I tell the person to take a step and then they take a step forward and that's the data that we're going to be looking at. So if you haven't seen my video on loading data uh, you can go check that out. That's basically the structure that I have set up here already. So this is going to load the data that we want. So let's go ahead and make sure that it does that. Here it is. It's just a CSV. We'll open it up. It's a large CSV file because it's about 10 seconds worth of data and we're collecting at uh, 1,000 hertz, 1,000 frames per second. Okay, so this just comes in as time series data. Uh, we'll open it up just to take a peek at it. Uh, you can see here that there are a bunch of NANs. That's because I'm opening it with XLS read and uh, that replaces strings with NANs. And you can just see it's kind of time series data, a bunch of different values. Um, our column five here is our vertical force, and then nine and 10 are center of pressure uh, values. So we want uh, column five and then column nine and column 10. So what we're gonna do uh, before we do that is specify that our frame rate is equal to 1000. That will come in handy later. And then we're going to say um, that FZ, our vertical force is equal to data in all rows of the fifth column. And then to remove those NANs, what we'll do is we'll call in FC, and then we'll say is NAN, and we'll pass FC into that, and we will replace that with blank characters, right? And then we'll do the same thing for COPX and COPY, uh, data in. Uh, for COPX, it's all rows of the ninth column, and then we'll say COPX, we'll pass in is NAN, and then COPX again, set that equal to blank. And then let's just copy and paste and replace these X's with Y's. And that is column 10. Okay, so the other thing that I'm going to do up here when we collect this data, our data, um, just because the way our lab is set up, it pulls in vertical forces as negative. So I'm going to invert those so that they're positive. And I only want to look at the center of pressure of the force platform while the person is actually on the plate. And so what I'm going to do is use a threshold of the vertical force to determine when to actually look for the data that we want. And so I'll say that COPX is now equal to COPX uh, only when that vertical force, that FZ, is greater than 10, right? So as long as the vertical force is greater than 10 newtons, uh, we'll keep the data. And we'll do the same thing with the center of pressure y. We'll say center of pressure y is now equal to the center of pressure y only where the vertical force is greater than 10 newtons. All right, let's go ahead and plot this just to make sure it looks okay. So we'll plot uh, COPX against COPY. And this should look just like uh, the slide. Oh, here we go. Forgot to actually run the code, that helps. So let's grab all of this 
and run it. There we go. Yeah, so you can see our data looks just like the, the data that I showed on the slide to begin with. The person is kind of hovering around here. I tell them to go. The center pressure shifts towards that swing foot and then back towards the stance foot and up. So now what we need to do is find the um, kind of the average point where the person is starting from. And then we need to find the peak medial lateral point. We need to get the distance between those two things. So let's go ahead and start by finding um, that starting position. And so we'll say start uh, x is going to be equal to the mean. And now I know what this is because I uh, am the one that ran the data collection. I know that the person is standing there for five seconds before they start moving. And so I know that I can look for COPX1 through five times our frame rate because I know that they were standing there for five seconds. And that's and I'm going to take the, the mean of that. So I'm going to take the mean of the first 5,000 data points or the first five seconds. I'm going to do this for X and for Y. Now, if you didn't know how long that person was standing there, you might consider something like taking the derivative of these and looking for sharp changes and then saying that when that sharp change occurs, that's when the person started shifting that center of pressure away from normal. Uh, but because I knew that the person was there for five seconds, uh, I can run it this way. And I would highly suggest just um, kind of knowing your collection when you're doing this kind of analysis or thinking about your analysis prior to um, beginning your, your actual data collection so that when things like this come along, you aren't thrown off guard. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot that start position to make sure it looks right. So let's save plot. We'll plot start x against start y. And let's make this um, a red circle. Make it size 8. And then we'll say uh, marker, base, color will also be red. Let's go ahead and run this. And there you go. So let's zoom in on this, make sure it is where we want it to be. Perfect. So it's right there. You can see the person's just kind of hovering around it. Now we need to get that peak medial lateral, medial lateral position uh, or the peak Y, and then we'll plot that, and then we'll find the different difference between that peak and our starting position to give us our medial lateral APA. So to do this, we're going to look for the max and the Y, and we're also going to need the index of this, and I'll show you why in just a second. We'll say max Y index. This is very simple. We'll use MATLAB's built-in max function to get the maximum of the COP in the Y direction. And it's really as simple as that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, um, plot that position as well to make sure it looks okay. And to do that, we need X and Y. So we don't need the Y index. We need COPX at Y's index. So we need to call COPX where max y index and we need to plot that against max y and we will make this uh, instead of a red circle we'll make this a blue circle we'll just copy and paste this and change these r's to b's and let's run and plot this Okay, so there you have it. All right, let's zoom in just so you can see this. So you can see now there's red, our red is our starting position, our blue is our max, and now we just need to find the difference between those two. So we'll come down here and we will say that our ML APA is equal to our max Y minus our start Y. All right. This is going to be in millimeters, so let's just run this. And you can see it's about 100 millimeters. Now you can change that to meters if you'd like uh, by just go ahead and dividing that by 1,000. Right. So there you have it. It's about 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters, 0.1 meters. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, give this a thumbs up. Um, this is a, 
a useful thing to to calculate, especially if you're working in populations that have difficulty with uh, motor initiation tasks. For example, Parkinson's disease, um, a large subset of that population has difficulty specifically starting walking. They call that freezing of gait. So this is a commonly calculated variable um, in that population. Uh, as I said, if you like this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter, on LinkedIn. You can find my um, academic work on ResearchGate, and you can find a lot of my codes up on GitHub. All right, thanks for watching. Until next time, keep coding.